can you just talk a little bit about the character of Brie? I mean, she is another interesting, interesting role for you. <laughs> you know, what is it about Brie that, that really excited you about it? That's so cute because I, I have <laughs> such a theory about the word interesting. You know, it's it, <laughs> when we use interesting, it really means something, right? It's not just interesting. It can be really bad. It can be really good. <laughs> and this, like if somebody says, how was your date? And you say, interesting. interesting. It's not necessarily good, right? How was your I mean, I think that explains Brie too. I think she's, she's a little wicked, but there are more layers to her. And I think that is really kind of your, your sweet spot as, as an actress too. <laughs> it is. It is. Isn't it funny? That's my sweet spot. The sweet spot that I like. And what I loved about Brie was, you know, the fun game for me is if the person is evil, but then I can try to make the audience root for her. If we, we find out why she is the way she is, you know, if the writing is layered enough. Yeah that we get to the to know this person and we understand that she wasn't born that way she was kind of made that way so that's always fun when that's in the writing mm. and i think you know there is this kind of it's not just straight up evil she is like deliciously evil i almost want to say you know like we've <laughs> seen you do as pam as as maleficent like yeah there's just something a little extra going on there and i think that's got to be fun for you to play around with it is so fun. I was asked this week, like, why is that fun? And I was like, it's fun to watch. <laughs> it's fun to do. You know, it's, I always feel sorry for the characters that have to play the, the reasonable, logical people. <laughs> and I mean, why do you think you are maybe, I don't know if you're drawn to these roles or if they're the roles that are coming to you, you know, is it a little bit of both? And, and, you know, how does that really work out, I guess? Yeah, that well, there's a lot of thought that went to that into that. So when I started acting in 94, I did sitcoms. Yeah. And loved them and would have happily stayed in that world, but they went away. Mm -hmm. And I had to adapt or starve. And I desperately, you know, because dramas came in. Yeah. Those and nice hour longs. <laughs> those nice hour longs. And I was only allowed in those hour longs to play the crying victim. Mm. So I spent years sobbing on all of these shows and I wanted to play the smart, tough girl. And that's just not what they cast normally blonde. <laughs> <laughs> I like the green though. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was dyed blue. And this is how, where it is now. This what's is left serious, of it. <laughs> this, is, this is what's happening. This is serious COVID yep. here. And, um, and I, I would, I worked so hard to try to get somebody to see me as strong or tough. And then basic instinct came out and you could be psychotic if you looked hmm. like me or Sharon Stone, you were blonde, basically. Yeah. You could be psychotic and really horny. <laughs> right? Great step. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I guess it's closer. So I was playing sex workers. Mm. And I got so good at those. I played sex workers for years and I enjoyed the hooker with a heart of gold. Right. So mm -hmm. there was the we were starting to get into this, these characters that were juxtaposed from good to bad, what you perceive is not what they are. And then True Blood, I got lucky because she was written in the books to be, to look like me. Mm. And so when I went in and I acted the part apparently well enough to get it, they were able to see me as the character because she was described that way by Charlene Harris. And then after I played that role. These are the roles that now are offered and I'm thrilled. Right? I mean, you do great at it. <laughs> I'm happy to watch them. <laughs> I would love to, having said that, I would love to do, love, 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 love to do sitcom comedy again. I, I was going to say, you know, what is a different type of role outside of this, this one that you really have started to get typecast. I know you said that during a, I think an interview with Fox this week too but just, you know, something else you'd really love to dig your teeth into. 
Uh, I'd love to go back to the comedy world. I was really good at it. I loved it. I appreciated it. It's also a nine to five job where you spend all week testing your timing and the writing with the people on the set. So you're just trying to make your friends laugh all week. Mm. And now for Paradise Cove, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, the first time we see Brie versus, you know, how it ramps up through the film. How, what goes through your, what's your process, I guess, to make sure that you're not starting at a hundred. Right. <laughs> and because you jump around when you're shooting. Yeah. That, that <laughs> is the trick. And luckily I had Sherry and Martine, you know, you have a great network of people that say, that have a control of the volume knob. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was always looking for in every scene how to find where she, I'm not judging her as crazy. I'm actually thinking, well, you know, she's kind of right. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some rationality to, uh, to some of her behavior, yes. <laughs> some of her behavior? <laughs> yes, she's been through it. <laughs> she's been through it. Her choices of what to do about that are um, suspect, yes. but, you know, that, ramp up was thought about by a lot of people. Yeah. And now I know you personally are a, you know, big animal rights activist. You are all about adopting dogs. I am as well. For you, you know, with this this character, obviously, no spoilers, but her and the dog don't necessarily get along the best. <laughs> is that something that you in your head is, is a little harder for you to wrap your head around as someone who is such an animal lover? Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't wrap my head around it. I have to just pretend it's not happening. I, if I'm watching a movie, you know, and someone hurts an animal, I want him dead. Right? Yeah. No, that's yeah. my initial reaction too. <laughs> Kill him slowly, you know? So it's definitely a turning point where we realize how unhinged. Lastly, I just wanted to, because I know you are very much into your, your causes. If there's any that you specifically want to talk about right now that we can maybe give some more awareness to. Oh, that's so sweet of you. And it's, it's honestly, it's so hard to pick one that I, I, I mean, adopting you and I both adopt, yep. don't shop. Mm -hmm. There are enough homes and we've reduced it from we, you know, people have worked so hard on it for decades down from something like 14 million dying in the shelters to 4 million. But at the beginning of this, you saw my puppies before we were recording and it's just heartbreaking that guys as sweet as and beautiful and loving and kind as that are going to die because they don't have papers or a pushed in face or the right shape of tail like none of us are pure breeds right <laughs> right you wouldn't pick your spouse that way no you know and if you, <laughs> you'd be waiting a long time if that were the case <laughs> right <laughs> and if you you know loved a guy with red hair and he died, you wouldn't be obsessed with having to meet another guy with red hair. I see people do that. They have yeah, a that pug would... they love and that pug dies, so they have to buy another. So I did too, I bought dogs back in the day, but now we know better.